Hi, welcome to an Aging Life Care Moment. And I am here today with Debbie Drellick. Debbie, welcome. Thank you so much. It's very exciting to welcome you to my office and my home. Sure. So Debbie, you have been a longtime member of the Aging Life Care Association, previously known as the National Association of Professional Geriatric Care Managers. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself, your practice, and um, how long you've been a member and why you joined? Okay. So I joined uh, originally NAP GCM, the National Association of Professional Geriatric Care Managers, back in 1994 at the encouragement of one of my very dear friends and colleagues, Edith Bain. I was working for a lovely nonprofit organization that worked with the homebound elderly. And she said, you know, you would be such a good fit for something like this. You should consider transitioning to this from agency practice. And I said, well, I'll go to a meeting with you. So I went to a meeting, which at that time in our New York chapter was held in the basement, actually, of a church on 65th Street. And uh, it was very small. Our president was Connie Rosenberg. And somehow, I don't know how, I was recruited to join the board almost immediately uh, in the role of first corresponding secretary. And I really just loved the people who were involved with the board and with the chapter, which was much smaller at that time. And I started to work part-time in care management. And at the same time, I still had my other work in a community-based organization. And I went from being the corresponding secretary to the reporting secretary. And at that time, to be the reporting secretary meant not only taking down minutes, but physically typing them, Xeroxing them, and mailing them out to membership. So obviously much has changed in those days. And I went from that role to working as the vice president, two different vice president roles within the chapter. Um, I had the pleasure and honor of being the president of the chapter for two terms, so for four years. Uh, I also had been invited to join the national board. Uh, first, I, I served on what was originally the certification committee at the time where the organization was working to become more professionalized, and I worked on that. And for two years, I was on the national board. and. Since, step, since uh, finishing my terms as president, I have chaired our various educational meetings throughout the year. I chaired or co-chaired almost every conference that we've had for a very long time. And it's been I would say a very long time, Debbie, because ever since I've been a member of the New York chapter, you have been integrally involved with the education committee and with um, assembling conferences, assembling great speakers, and now more recently leading up a brand new younger cohort of care managers to take on that role. You have been so instrumental in providing the most incredible education experiences to our New York chapter. And it's so interesting to hear your experience on the certification process at a national level because that is so important to have those credentials that sets us apart. And to hear that you're responsible for that is, is just uh, incredible also. Uh, tell me about the changes, Debbie, you're seeing in the aging life care industry over time. Uh, what, what, what are the biggest changes that you've seen? I think that we have become, in the 26 years that I've been involved, I think that as an organization, again, we've become more professionalized. And it and, and the name has gotten out there. I remember years ago when I would describe what it was that I did to other professionals, I would just in frustration say, I'm a geriatric social worker. This is what I do. I work privately and I'm a social worker and I work in geriatrics because they would just, it was just clueless, clueless, clueless. And uh, when we rebranded several years ago, that was a whole new education process to explain, you know, that I'm an aging life care manager and specialist and consultant. And um, I think that the field is just 
very much respected as, as a player at the table now than it was when I first got involved with this so many years ago. Well, Debbie, I would say that you are one of the leading experts of aging in this New York City region, and I'm honored to know you as an esteemed colleague. What would you say to interested potential members um, that might be thinking about a career with aging or joining the Aging Life Care Association? What do you think the value added is there? I think that to work in this profession without having the support of, on the local level, the chapter, and on the national level, the organization is, I'm a very much a people person, and I don't think that I would have stayed in this field as long as I have without my involvement in our organization, because there's support, there's networking, um, and education. Education to me, which is probably why I've invested all of my time, or so much of my time in that as a priority, is that makes a difference because the work we do is so hard. It's just so incredibly hard and it, to be lonely and not to have direct uh, co-workers makes it a very different experience. So having the support of the organization is completely invaluable and has been to me. Terrific. Well, Debbie, I want to thank you again for all that you've given to the organization, both nationally and locally here in New York. And um, I join with you in celebrating Alka's 35th. And thank you for spending the time today. My pleasure. Thank you, Anne.